Microsoft Corporation and Apple Incorporated are two of America's largest companies. Chances are you're using one of their products right now. Microsoft Corporation was founded on April 4, 1975 by Bill Gates and Paul Allen in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Microsoft's total revenue by the end of 1976 totaled $16,005. Compare that to a total net revenue of two, for 2012 of over $85 billion. Almost exactly a year later, Apple was formally incorporated on April 1, 1976 in Los Altos, California by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne. If you've never heard of Ronald Wayne, that's because after only three months, Wayne sold his share of Apple for $800. With a net income of over $41 billion for 2012, I bet he regrets that decision. To find out just how these two companies stack up, let's take a look at some similarities and differences in their solvency and profitability measures. <clears throat> we'll start with profitability measures. The ratio of net sales to assets measures a company's ability to effectively utilize its assets. The higher the ratio, the better job the company is doing. In other words, the ratio determines how hard each dollar a company spends on its assets is working for them. Apple's ratio of net sales to uh, assets for fiscal year 2012 equaled 2.2, which means for every dollar they spent on assets, they more than doubled their return. Conversely, Microsoft's ratio of net sales to assets for 2012 was under 1 at 0.7, which means they have room to increase the efficiency of their operations. Let's look at the price earnings ratio, which measures the future earnings prospects for each company. On November 1, 2013, the closing market price per share for Microsoft was $35.53. The reported earnings per share on common stock for fiscal year 2012 was $2.02, .02, resulting in a price earnings ratio of 17.6. Apple, on the other hand, <clears throat> had a closing market price per share on the same date of $74.29, but reported earnings per share on common stock of $44.64, resulting in a much lower price earnings ratio of 1.7. The summary of profitability measures shows us that while Apple's revenue ratios were higher, Microsoft saw better returns on their com common stock. Now let's compare solvency measures between our two companies. While the financial measures aren't close for the two companies, their current ratios and quick ratios are both close in number. This means their current assets don't differ significantly from their quick assets. The higher the number, the more debt paying ability the company has. With a quick ratio of just over one, Apple has less immediate debt paying ability than Microsoft does with a quick, quick ratio of 2.4. Another similarity that can be found is that both companies enjoy a ratio of liabilities to stockholders equity of less than one. Because the stockholders equity is the denominator, the lower the ratio, the better the measure. Apple's ratio of liabilities to stockholders' equity was the stronger of the two at 0.5 for 2012 versus Microsoft's 0.8. The final similarity that I'd like to discuss are the company's ratios of fixed assets to long-term liabilities. Both Apple and Microsoft have ratios of fixed assets to long-term liabilities of less than one at 0.8 and 0.4 respectively. What this essentially means is that both companies have more long-term liability than fixed assets. Let's take a look at the reporting methods of cash flows for each company. Both Apple and Microsoft utilize the indirect me direct method of cash of their, for their statements of cash flows. By doing so, they indirectly determine changes in cash accounts by analyzing non-cash balance sheet accounts. <clears throat> All the information all this information is useful for Apple and Microsoft in making day-to-day -day decisions. Investors and creditors can use this information to their benefit as well. Analyzing the solvency and profitability measures is one way they're going to ensure their continued success. <clears throat>